Hi everybody, I'm Matt, and I'm really happy to be here today because it's a big day in Mike's Bikes in Santa Cruz land. Uh, today is the launch of the new 5010, a bike that's been a mainstay in their line for several years, a bike that appeals to a lot of riders, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. But even bigger than that is also the launch of the Giuliano Furtado right alongside it. So here to help me with that is my friend, Jibby Libby. Stoked to be here. Let's go check out these bikes. Uh, so there are some differences specifically between the Santa Cruz and the Giuliana versions of this bike. Uh, so Libby, why don't you run through those? Yeah, so we have about like three differences. We have smaller grips for smaller hands and a traditional women's saddle. And then they have a suspension tuned for a lighter rider, meaning it's not really gender specific. If you run lighter, you might benefit from this bike. So beyond that, there's the difference in the branding and certain riders are just more attracted to the different brands. So Santa Cruz. Yeah, if you don't want to be super bro-y, you can head over to the Juliana. And the Juliana has a bit more of kind of a restrained adventure fun social element to it. Uh, so people just prefer different brands and you get all the choices. And all the benefits. All right, so let's talk about who this bike is for. Uh, this bike sits squarely in between their XC bikes like the Blur and the Wilder and the Hightower and Bronx at the 150N. So this bike feels like it's for the rider who is maybe coming at it from more of a, a technical background, um, downhill trail bike, and they want something that is lighter, shorter travel, uh, to give them a little bit more sort of long distance in the riding and a bit more poppy feel. Or somebody coming from the other side, a uh, cross country rider that wants to build their skills and wants to ride a bit more aggressive trails and push their limits, have a bit more fun. But we got to ride these bikes last night, super fun. What stood out to you and, and who do you think is gonna gravitate towards them? Yeah, I, I think this bike is for the cross country rider who wants to get down the steeps and feel confident or the trail rider who can't really lift up that big, huge 29er and they wanna romp around, hit the jumps, um, <laughs> jump over those like rocks, but and they don't feel so settled down into the bike. And then also this bike is for somebody who wants to have both flats and clipless pedals. Right. Yeah, it, it, it could be at home in a race and it could be home in some more technical trails. Yeah, you're not stuck to one specific category with this bike. Right. right. So now we start switching to features. And the first thing is the big change that we see is the MX wheel setup. And we've seen this with a lot of the new bikes coming out with 650 bikes. And what does this mean, Matt? Um, so the 650 bikes historically for Santa Cruz have been definitely more their, their playful bikes. And there was a big difference between the 650 and the 29er bikes. But so far this year, all of the 650 bikes have been getting updated to an MX wheel set, which is a, a, a mullet, which means 29 inch front, 27.5 rear. And what Santa Cruz is, has come to realize is by going to that bigger front wheel, um, coupled with the modern geometry, which we'll get into later, you gain a lot of confidence, you gain a lot of speed and the ability to kind of roll over stuff with the front. But because of the geometry and the small wheel in the back, you still maintain a lot of that playfulness. So you're, by going to MX, you're gaining a lot through the front of the bike, but you're not sacrificing a lot of that maneuverability, the jibbiness that you like so much, um, and the ability to just kind of fun and, and, and have fun playing down the trail. So that's basically party in the front, business in the back. So in addition to the big change of the big front wheel, um, the 5010 and the Furtado are also getting what we're calling the standard 2023 Santa Cruz upgrade package. Uh, so a shift to more progressive geometry, uh, lowering the anti-squat, size specific chain stays, the glove box with the tool purse and the two wallet um, and the peephole. So all of those features that have been great on all the bikes so far this year also come to the 5010 and the Furtado, which is great. Uh, so one really cool side note about this bike is uh, the wide range and sizes that it comes in. Uh, lending itself to the versatility of the bike and, and the wide range of people that it's going to appeal to is all the sizes. So the 5010 comes all the way from an extra small all the way up to a double extra large, which is pretty cool. And the Furtado runs all the way from an extra small to a medium, and you don't have to sacrifice on the extra small, you still get that MX wheel set. And that is an engineering Yeah, piece. that's pretty incredible to be able to get that big front wheel in that little tiny bike, uh, so every size has the same intended ride experience. Pretty awesome. So the biggest change they made to the suspension on the new 5010 and the Furtado is similar to what they've been doing on all of their bikes this year, and that's reducing the anti-squat. And what anti-squat is, is the designing the kinematics of the bike so that the chain force and the suspension movement are 
independent of each other. Um, so the act of pedaling, the force you put through the chain doesn't impact the suspension negatively or, or positively, but the bigger impact to your ride and how you feel on the bike is that when the bike is rolling down the terrain and it hits a bump, something is forcing the suspension to compress. It's not held up by the chain force. It's free to react appropriately to whatever the terrain is. So the bike feels very predictable. The bike does what it's supposed to do and it's free to react and roll over stuff appropriately. And that just makes the ride smoother, more fun, and you have a blast. So there's three main changes to the geometry. Uh, the first one that we're gonna talk about is the stack height. Because it's got that big front wheel, the front of the bike is up higher. So the stack is, is more than a centimeter taller than the previous bike. Um, and we got to ride last night, so what, what, did that stand out to you and how did you feel? Yeah, I felt more planted in the bike and on a shorter travel trail bike, I would always feel up high and it was twitchier. This one, I felt Kind of Kind of down in was, was a good yeah. control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I felt yeah. like I was back on my long travel enduro bike. Nice, cool. Uh, second big change we're going to talk about is head angle. Everybody's favorite because um, everyone wants to know how slack is it. So this bike gets a half degree slacker uh, in its low setting. It's down below 65, which is pretty darn slack for a bike in the 140, 130 range. So last night we rode some pretty steep stuff. What stood out about that? Yeah, Matt said you want to go down a technical trail. And so we hit this chute and I was planted on it. I didn't get a butt buzz like you would on a shorter travel bike. This one felt Oh, good. Yeah, uh, you were able to sort of let off the brakes and, and carry some speed through the steep stuff without feeling all Yeah, I found that sketchy. the more I let off the brakes, the better that this bike felt. Yeah, uh, the last big change we want to talk about is uh, how much longer the bike got in its wheelbase. Um, and that's not just all in the front end. The bike also got a little bit of an increase in the rear end, which you might think, but this is supposed to be a playful bike, short wheelbase, really maneuverable. But uh, I used to think that the chainstay length was really the key element of a mullet bike and having a really short chainstay. But Santa Cruz has changed my mind on that because a lot of their uh, small wheel rear bikes have actually increased the length of the chainstay. And it turns out that it's more the elevation difference in the front axle to the rear axle. So you sit higher and you're more above the rear axle. And I think that's what gives you that easy ability to get the front wheel off the ground and get the whole bike off the ground. Um, so even though the chainstay is longer, you don't really lose that sort of playfulness and the ability to get the bike off the ground and kind of maneuver around. So I think it's pretty cool. All right, so let's talk uh, models, spec, price. Uh, this bike comes in all of the standard uh, kits from the entry level CR at 50 something hundred dollars and goes all the way up to the uh, XX1 Axis Reserve for over 10 grand. Uh, but this was your first time riding a GX Axis wireless bike. What'd you think? Yeah, I wish I didn't ride it because I really like it now. And I could hear every time I uh, switch gears, you hear this little beep up boop. Yeah, a little and robot in there. Yeah, yeah, a little like elves in there being like, you know, change gears, but. Uh, quick learning curve, and when I hit a climb that I was in the wrong gear, I just was automatically now in my new gear. Nice. After. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Once you go, thanks, it's hard Matt. to go back to cables. Yeah, thanks, Matt. All right, one of the things that stood out to me was it was the first time I got to ride a bike with uh, the Buttercup technology in the RockShox forks. Uh, it comes on uh, their new pikes and some other forks, and it's this really cool little kind of a rubber damper that's really small bump sensitivity, really high frequency, low impact. So it's the first little bit. So I just remember we talked after the first section of trail, we were both like, holy crap, this bike is so smooth. There's just something in there where it really smooths out that high frequency vibration. So the Buttercup stuff is really cool, and I didn't even know I had it until after. Definitely agreed. Yeah. So, uh, CR bikes, um, like I said, from 5,000 bucks all the way up to the top line over 10 grand. Cue the automatic, you could buy a motorcycle for that comment down below. But let's try something different. Maybe throw in the comments, what else could you buy for that money? Maybe and let's have some fun. Prada handbag, Botox, <laughs> facelift. All right, a whole new element. It's time to wrap this madness up. Uh, Libby, thanks for joining us. It was a lot of fun. Thanks for having me, Matt. Yeah, and follow our socials. Facebook, Instagram, TikTok,